This video is sponsored by Tall Man Toys and Comics. Time to get frisky with Kremit. Come here. Come here, baby. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> I was kidding. Holy shit. Move. Run. Run. I think so. I oh, my God. Oh. No. I want to touch your froggy ass. I am going to Kermit suicide. <laughs> For anyone that grew up in the late 90s, do you guys remember seeing this logo pop up? Believe it or not, there was a time when the Jim Henson Company made a deal with Sony to make some of their movies. After the financial flop that was Muppet Treasure Island, both Columbia and the Jim Henson Company made a 12-year deal on making movies and other Muppet projects. Unfortunately, this deal did not last very long and they were only able to produce three films. Buddy... Muppets from Space, and Elmo and Grouchland, all of which were box office bombs. Now, this wasn't the first time a Jim Henson film was released by Sony. The Muppets Take Manhattan and Labyrinth were released before these three films, but this would have been the first time that the Jim Henson company would take a different direction with their films. But that was not meant to be. So what is there to talk about? So today, I'm just going to give you guys my opinion on these three movies. Now, if you guys do or do not like these movies, that is fine. Just remember that this is all just my opinion. So our first movie on the list is Buddy. Now, I will admit this. Buddy was a movie that I barely grew up with. The other two I have a more nostalgic connection on, but this one I barely heard anything about. I do know the fact that not many people remember it. I can, it's very hard to find and that the movie bombed at the box office, which there's reasons to that, but we're going to get to that. From what I can gather, it is based on a true story as what the movie implies, but I could barely find any information about this movie at all. This was made at a time when animal movies were popular, so I guess Sony wanted some of that family friendly animal movie pie, if you know what I mean. And I may go a little ahead of myself when I say this, but Buddy is my least favorite of the three movies, in my opinion. It's not the worst, it's just not a good movie. The animals are trying to have good performances, but they end up being annoying like the chimpanzees. The story is really stupid when you think about it. The ape effects look cheesy and kind of uninspired, and everything about it just seemed a little too overdramatic. It's trying too hard to be dark, and at other times it's trying to be goofy and cheesy. Look, I understand this is a kid's film and I shouldn't really get onto it so much. But you know what? This movie could have worked if done by the right team. You know, instead of the Jim Henson Company, you could have gotten someone that's really good with drama or comedy like, say, oh, I don't know, Don Bluth or Disney. I think they would have done a much better job with this film than Sony and Jim Henson Company. Not that the Jim Henson Company can't do good drama or good fantasy or good comedy. It's just not with this sort of story that they're telling. But enough of that. Our next one on the list is Muppets from Space. I will try to get into more detail about Muppets from Space because technically this and Elmo and Grouchland I actually am more nostalgic with. So I'll try my best to keep a little more history in both of these movies. Though out of all three of these movies, Muppets from Space had the worst production. You see, the movie had a very completely different story. It was supposed to be involving Kermit getting kidnapped by aliens and the Muppets going to save him. Unfortunately, that story got scrapped. The movie was supposed to be also directed by Randall Kleiser, the director of Grease and Flight of the Navigator. But the company thought his vision wasn't creative enough for the project. So they replaced him with Tim Hill, who would go on to direct a lot of bad stuff. The movie was also slated for a February 2000 release. However, for some reason, Sony took the release date from February 2000 to July of 1999. So this was supposed to be released after Elmo and Grouchland, for some reason. And of course, just like Buddy, it ended up as a box office bomb. But that was because of the competition it had to go against at the time and the lack of advertising. Well, that explains a lot, doesn't it? Now, as for the movie itself, it's actually my favorite of the three. It's not perfect by any means. It's definitely not as good as, say, the Muppet movie or the Great Muppet Caper. But it's still a fun Muppet movie for what it is. Um, the humor wasn't bad and the acting was okay. And I thought that they were at least trying with the story, even if it felt pretty weak. So 
I thought it was fine. Though I do understand why most Muppet fans are split. The story doesn't know where to go with itself, some of the humor is hit or miss, and yeah, some of the cameos are not as clever as the ones in most Muppet films. But if you are very curious and if you just want to see a very 90s Muppet film, I say this is a fine rental. Do I think it's great? No. But personally, I say go check it out. I think you'll find at least one or two jokes that were at least worth the time when you're watching this. And now for the last film on our list, it's Elmo and Grouchland. Now, much like Buddy, I was not able to find much production issues or anything involving its production. But I do know for the fact that because of Elmo's popularity, they just had to give him his own movie. Elmo was everywhere around the late 90, mid to late 90s, so why not make a movie out of him? Now, as far as this movie goes, well, I find it to be somewhere in the middle. It's not as bad as Buddy, but it's definitely not as fun as Muppets from Space. And I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. I actually prefer the movie Follow That Bird over this film. Let's start off with the good stuff. I actually really like the puppetry in this film. It's visually nice. It looks really well done. The puppetry on the characters and the other Muppets look fantastic. And yeah, everybody's acting is pretty well done here. Um, some of the acting is very solid, mostly from Mandy Patinkin and Vanessa Williams. And I do like the fact that they are at least trying to do something cinematic while also not just being another episode of Sesame Street. Kind of like Follow That Bird. But with that said, there are some problems that keep me away from loving this film. First of all, I don't like Elmo as a main character. I found him kind of annoying and not very relatable. The music, the musical numbers, while not awful, are kind of forgettable. And the story is way too simple. I mean, you could have done more with the story. At least Muppets from Space did tried with its story, but here it just didn't work. But then again, this is just my opinion. Kids will probably love it more than I did, and I'm sure there's a few people out there that still like it, but for me, I say I'd watch Fall of That Bird again. And of course, just like Muppets from Space and Buddy, this of course became a box office bomb. I don't find that shocking at all. And because that all three of these movies bombed, the Jim Henson Pictures has not been making anything ever since. There were plans to make more Muppet related films, but they all end up getting cancelled. But that's really kind of a shame because I would have loved to see more movies come out of this company. Now the good news is the Jim Henson Company still makes movies, but they're not called Jim Henson Pictures, they're just called the Jim Henson Company. So overall guys, I can understand why this didn't do so well. This Sony and Muppet deal was doomed from the start. Maybe if these movies had better marketing and maybe less production issues, this could have actually worked. But Sony just wanted to try and cash in on the Muppets. That's all this whole thing was about. I'm sure that wasn't quite the intent, but I would have been shocked if that was the case. Not to mention, all these movies were made at a time when kids' films were not doing very well. The only company at the time that was actually doing well making movies was Disney. But even if Disney released these films, I don't think that would have been a high bar for the company. We can always remember a time when Sony made one of the biggest deals in Bumpman Muppet movie history. It's kind of a shame that this company didn't do more films after that, but you know, at least things have gotten better for the company. Also, I just want to say thank you guys for 50 subscribers, and I can't wait to see how far this channel will make me go. See you guys.